Okay, I have been very slowly doing a series on my channel where I have been talking about the worst fill in blank. I had the worst first books in the series, I had the, the worst middle books or something, worst sequels, and now let's talk about the worst series enders ever. This video is going to be about the worst series enders. And we're gonna start out with a cheap shot, one that most of you probably almost all of you will agree with me on. Let's chat about Harry Potter. I, I thought I still owned my copy of The Cursed Child, but apparently not. So first, the series ended with that epilogue that, you know, we don't really like that much, or at least most of us don't. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just, it, it wasn't necessary and it sucked. But we moved on, we lived our lives. Some of us pretended it didn't happen it wasn't the worst thing that's ever happened to us until the cursed child. And because JK Rowling, whoops, there we go. Because JK Rowling is bent and determined to ruin her own franchise, she tweeted that we should consider the cursed child canon. I know she didn't write it. You know she didn't write it, but she did help come up with the plot that created plot holes in her own story and that didn't, wasn't true to the characters that she wrote and then she gave it the thumbs up and the go ahead and then she said treat it as canon woman why do you hate harry potter so much more than we do why don't you love it like we do next let's go back in time a little bit and talk about the giver quartet is it called the giver quartet i believe so the giver was amazing. It's a dystopian or a utopian, depending on what kind of person you are. And it is so good. You likely read it in school. It's about a young boy who lives in a society where everything is mandated, scheduled, and ruled over, and everything is exactly as it should be. People say what they're supposed to say. They do what they're supposed to do. This child has been placed in his career that he will have for the rest of his life, and his career is the receiver, which means that he receives all memories in the world. And he is the person that society goes to, that the leaders go to, to make decisions because he's the only one that has knowledge about how horrible the world can get if it's not so sterile. And, uh, and then, you know, he decides this is a bad society, as one does, and he takes it down. Then you have the messenger, which is a companion, and it takes place in another village in the same world following different people, but they're connected. And, and that one was amazing. And then you have, wait a second. I said the messenger, I meant gathering blue. You saw the book, you knew what I was saying. Then you have the messenger, which is also in a different village in the same world, still connected to these two, not as good. And then you have the one. So here's why the one sucked. All of these are connected and they, and you know that they're all going to come together eventually somehow. still recommend it because book one, books one and two were fantastic, but just don't expect to be satisfied. We've got another cheap shot. Uh, I'm gonna go with the hardbacks because I own both. Another easy answer will be The Hunger Games. Book one was fantastic. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. It was beautiful. It may not be the most well-written story in the world, but boy, is it a good story. And by good, I mean horrifying in the best way. Book one was fantastic. Book two has some mixed opinions, but I personally like book two even more than book one. And then book three happened. Let me tell you all the things you did wrong. You had a terrible love triangle throughout your entire trilogy that was not resolved in a satisfying way. I.e. the main character pretty much didn't even make a choice. She just ended up with the one that stayed the longest. Your main character, who was great and had so much potential, didn't have any development. She wallowed in her PTSD until it took her over and then love got her out of it slightly. Thanks for that. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the PTSD uh, representation. I appreciate that that the character actually felt something for everything that happened. But it would have been cool if she came out of it without like being dragged out by her love interest and only half-heartedly so. Those were mild spoilers, but maybe I'll put something on the screen. This one, I'm not happy to have on the list, but let's do it anyway. Peter Pan and Kensington Gardens. So this is a prequel, so maybe it doesn't belong here, but you know, my video, my rules. Peter Pan is my favorite book of all time. Peter Pan in Kensington Garden was written afterwards as a prequel. Not only did this book suck <laughs> because it wasn't interesting and it was pointless, honestly, is how it felt. I mean, the whole thing that was happening throughout the entire thing just felt entirely pointless. It felt pointless until the end. And what I will say is the end of this little, little dandy did actually contribute, where are we going? Did actually contribute to Peter Pan. I actually am glad that I read this horrible book because it ends in about the most tragic way it possibly could have to the point that after I finished the book, I gave it one star and hated it and wished I had never read it because I thought that it was just the meanest thing the author could have done to me. But after having read it, and then reread Peter Pan, I realized it does actually add to the story. So I appreciate it for that purpose, but that doesn't change the fact that the entire journey getting to the end was terrible and it still hurt me so bad, but it did not ruin Peter Pan for me. In fact, it, it did add to Peter Pan, so I, I do think that you should still read it if you love Peter Pan like I do. Ooh, okay, let's talk about Vengeful. So Vicious by V.E. Schwab, I actually gave like four stars. I gave it a really high rating. Vicious is about these two fellas who are besties, and then they realize, they learn how they can gain superpowers, and then they gain them, and then they become enemies, and they wanna kill each other. And I thought book one, was great. Book two, on the other hand, well, I really don't want to go into as much depth as I did with um, The Hunger Games because I don't want to go into a lot of spoilers. So what I'll say, I can't believe this is a duology. <laughs> I came out of this book thinking it was a trilogy and I came out thinking book two was so pointless and all it was was a bunch of buildup to get us to book three but it turns out there is no book three. What? What? It was so... <laughs> you know what? I, what I'll do for Vengeful, just because this is still a fairly new release and I really don't know how to quite explain this one without um, spoilers, we'll just direct you to my Goodreads, always linked in the description of my videos. And I do have spoiler sections, so if you've read it or you don't wanna read it and you wanna know why I feel so strongly about this book, check it out. Ooh, okay, this is a good one. Young Murphy, pre-booktube Murphy, loved the selection series. One of my favorite series. Now, I have recently tried to reread it, and I don't feel the same way as I used to, but it doesn't matter. It was a story that I loved so much. Book one was great. Book two was horrible. <laughs> Did I put this in my worst sequels? video because it really belonged there. Book three was fine. It was solid. It wasn't great, but you know, it was fine. I was satisfied with that ending. And then Kiara Cass did us dirty. We got to follow America's daughter, who is a brat and who, uh, well, in her book, her parents don't act the same as they did in America's book books. I just really didn't need these books. I really didn't need them from this series. Next book, I'm once again going to direct you to my Goodreads because I've actually already ranted about this book a lot, and that's Clockwork Princess. So Cassandra Clare is an author that I gave nine books before I decided she wasn't the right author for me. I didn't love her mortal instruments. Some of her books I thought were fine, some of them I hated. And um, I, I continued reading because everybody was like, just get to the Clockwork series. So I did that. And then I thought that books one and two were fine. And then book three came along and everybody was like, just read book three. It's the best thing you'll ever have read. It was my least favorite in the trilogy. Clockwork Princess 
<laughs> made me so mad. And once again, I'm just gonna have to direct you to my Goodreads. I personally don't like Cassandra Clare's writing in general. Um, and I don't like her romance and her books are very heavily focused on the romance. She, I think personally that Cassandra Clare doesn't, she uses insta-love. I think that these characters are in love so darn fast and for no reason and I cannot for the life of me understand what happened to make these characters love each other so hard. But then you have the daggum story that happened and... I just really didn't like it. You should check out my Goodreads review. And to wrap this video up, I'm just gonna do some quick mentions of some other books that I've, that I don't really have very strong feelings about. I just didn't think they ended well. Divergent, I don't really know that I've ever heard anyone say they liked the ending. And plus the last two books just weren't good. To all the boys I loved before, I thought the last book was really boring and I also didn't like who she ended up with. And Vampire Academy, which really doesn't even belong on this list because I didn't even finish the series, but it's a six book series and I read five of the books and I liked the first three and I didn't like the last two, so here it is. But please talk to me in the comments if you have, if you agree with me on some of these, if you disagree, let's chat. I know that some of these, a lot of my subscribers feel differently than I do about and that is totally fine. I love discussing stuff like this, so let's talk. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. See you guys again soon.